Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here. Today, touching a little bit more on the 3D photogrammetry drone mapping stuff I, I touched on with a previous video from a few months ago. If you haven't seen that, you might want to check it out now. And basically it's about how you can capture something like this. Uh, this is a fairly crude example, but something like this with uh, a drone fairly quickly. I wasn't paid to, to capture this. This is just a little test run I did to, you know, work on my workflow of actually producing these, which is not as straightforward as one would hope. So today I'm going to walk you through how you can get from um, something in Web ODM, like we've seen, and and get it into uh, a more compressed format because when you download these uh, let's see download and I work from the textured model uh, that was let's see 182 megabytes so we are going to get it down to within sketchfab limits of 100 for a free category let's say if you just want to share something cool with your friends or family and um, yeah, just overall making it faster performing and more transportable because that's what's going to make this technology more in demand is when more people can provide it easier and it can be more easily accessed. So uh, here we go. This is what we're working from. Now this flight was captured to get just a good top down view. So as you can see, the mesh quickly falls apart as soon as you go for a horizontal view because there's only about 30, 20 to 30 photos in this, if that. So we've downloaded the 2D version. And by the way, there's some waiting involved in this. So I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to show you every step as it's being done. I will show you how to do it, but we won't be waiting around to watch it complete. You have your web ODM finished project. Download it, textured model, save it as a zip file somewhere, then extract it. With your extracted version, we are going to go into, uh, I use Blender, that's what I'm going to be walking you through. Blender is an amazing 3D open source uh, creative design software available on all platforms. So Mac, Windows, Linux, you can do it on any of them. Uh, so let's open that up. Now we would go File, Import, Wavefront OBJ, that's what we've just downloaded. and we would be left with something like this. Now this is our high res version and it has with it tons of materials and each one of these covers its own small section of the map and ultimately we need one we need to transport one image along with our model to to get this to anyone. Uh, you know one image for each material. Uh, what we're going to do is get that onto one single JPEG in our case so it's much smaller and also clean up this mesh so it's not so uh, unnecessarily detailed in our case so we've got our high-res version now this normally starts off as two different things what I'd recommend you do is you pull it up we change uh, we have it like this and it would start as you know whatever it is something different we don't want let's go to the UV editor here and on this one, let's go to the shader editor. All right. So we have a high res version. We don't really want to do too much with this. We can, we can hide that temporarily. Okay. So we will go here and go image new and let's give this, you know, 4096 is what a 4k texture is working in square values. So, um, and then Let's start with that. That's what I've done in the last one. It's still severely, you know, uh, shrank a much smaller version than the original resolution, but let's just do it. Okay. So we have that. Uh, now we will take this shifty makes a second version of something. I'm going to delete mine and that one we can rename to low res. What we do is um, add modifier, decimate, and we can just collapse it by some factor. Uh, my original one was about 72,000 here. I cut it down by 0.6. That's 
that brought me to 43,000 and now here again uh, if I did that it would bring me down to 26,000 and as you can see you know it just is ultimately smoothing some things out uh, but we're going to leave that if this was you continuing on here you will hit apply okay and um, we are back to my 40,000 size mesh now we will go to the materials tab of our new low res model which has been uh, shrank in, in geometry from the high res version we're going to go to here um, if it was like this one we would have all these materials right now i would go erase everything okay and once we are left with nothing we'll go a new one and let's call this one your new material now inside our shader editor which was the second window we set up we should make sure here we are in your new material and all we need to do is go add search let's go image texture put it right there and whatever we created it here let's give it a name uh, we will call this the uh, compilation map because we're compiling all kinds of maps together now let's just quickly save that now here let's go pick it up now let's just hide the high res for a sec we'll go here tab to enter edit mode a to select everything and I've already done this but you will want to go UV smart UV project um, these are the settings I used uh, you may find some benefit to fiddling around with them if it's not coming out very well here uh, I'm gonna escape this because this is one step where it does take a while there's a little bit of weight just like how there's a little bit of a weight when we apply that decimate modifier uh, so we have this let's return this to be invisible and renderable so we're gonna click on uh, and we're gonna get out of here object mode is where we return and now let's click this and click this and go over here make sure we are in cycles and we will go down to bake we want to get the color from one map to the other it's a uh, color from photo so it's kind of got lighting baked in so all we really want to do is grab that color again here it starts off as combined what you want to do is go and diffuse turn off direct and indirect because that takes into account um, the computed ambient occlusion of this you know creating shadow on that which we don't want that's already happened in real life and uh, also in the case of if you have this set up as a scene with the Sun let's say it would factor that in and we don't want to do that either necessarily in this case sometimes you might I don't think we do here um, now I bump this up a bit because I was finding better results with it and I also had this turned much further down and all we want to do after that setup we have selected our low resolution first then our high resolution we have selected to active clicked extrusion bumped up a little bit might depend on the size of your mesh and the scale of it and um, this shrank down because I think it makes more effective use of of projecting the image not sure we'll see anyways let's go bake and this is one of those uh, steps that's going to take a while but we are going to record that so just one thing I'll add while we are waiting here is uh, I'm showing you one of the most basic ways we can cut down our model our very uh, heavyweight model you might call it uh, but we could take it a step further again by by exporting some of the normal maps and uh, this would allow us to return some of the detail that we've lost from the high resolution version we are not getting into that right now but it is uh, a similar process and you can do it and it will help you I'm not getting into it right now it's a similar process and it is uh, pretty helpful for keeping high quality models okay and there we go we are all finished uh, as you can see we are in the file we created compilation map and we have this projection from all the different materials with their very haphazardly created 
texture atlas you might call it this one's not much better as you can tell by what's happening over here but it is still you know one giant piece over here which we didn't have before um, and you know we got fragments of red house happening sides of the house happening but again parts of this will be fixed when you have a better quality mesh uh, this was really created for a top-down perspective on this one uh, so we have that now let's just dial that in right there and let's turn off this hide the high res and let's go z check out material preview here we go so we can see we now have a pretty good version let's see what it used to look like and there we go uh, so some of the settings you see it looks a little little duller that's going to have to do with some of this i think if we turn that down go back and turn down some of this roughness uh, we go back to having a more deeply saturated look and some of these holes um, i was having in previous trials of this i was having some holes appear because of the mesh problems like some of these bigger ones are and some of them were appearing because of the setting on this extrusion here um, so you know messing around with that is where you might fix some of these also there's one step i didn't really get into but if we did a inside edit mode mesh uh, clean up fill holes um, that would help you you know the earlier you do that step it is going to be more taxing on your system but it's also going to save you a little bit of troubles further down the road in some of what we've done here and some of those lengthy time waiting processes so uh, now finishing all that we can delete this high res boom boom delete it uh, or you know start off save as a new version of this file which is my typical practice um, and eliminate you know the high res from one of them and then we should be in a position where we can upload this blend file to sketchfab so let's uh, skip out of this one okay there's one super important step i forgot to mention when i did the walkthrough with the uh, compilation map file name here but it's very important as soon as you see this result um, and we start talking about that you need to go image save as and make sure it is uh, given a new home this nice information you created uh, you can tell if there's an asterisk here it means it hasn't been saved same like when you're up here if there's an asterisk it means it hasn't been saved from whatever you've just recently changed so there you go don't forget to save uh, I'm not gonna save anything because I have done all these things already okay so we have our image map that we've created and uh, the file that has just the low res version and we just want to compress that sketchfab ready and you can see we are coming in just under 100k which I believe is uh, or 100,000 K 100 megabytes uh, just under there free restrictions which is what you want to do we in this one i believe i also made the mistake of packing in the original texture maps so this is a pretty good version if i can get all that in for this much um, you should be able to do a much larger file than i am so close that upload your zip file here edit your settings give it your information and that is all you have to do uh, I didn't change anything here, but let's go ahead and have a little look. There we go. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is uh, you see these black lines. I think that's part of the margin setting. So I was probably cutting it way too close to the edge because uh, that's about how big a pixel is. So you should give it at least, I would guess, you know, one to two pixels. Uh, that's not a good look, but you can fix that. So there you have it. I know I've heard the question out there uh, several times already how to get your drone photogrammetry onto the internet, transport it, share it with people, uh, show it off online. And this is so far the, the most accessible way I've found so far. Uh, hopefully it helps some of you out there. Let me know if you have any tips to add, any questions, comments. Thanks for watching. Leave a, leave a like if you found this helpful. And uh, let me know what you want to see with the next one. Take care.